All right, I'm just going to jump right in to the presentation. Thank you for that great introduction. So I'm here today. I recently joined Giga Metals and I've been working with uh, Mark Jarvis, the CEO. Um, and Mark has actually been with the company since 2004. So the two of us are working hard to move this project forward. Now about Giga Metals, we are listed on the TSXV and, and recently graduated to the OTCQX, which was great news for us. And yeah, as uh, Gilbert mentioned, the world is in critical need of battery metals. So we believe we've got a project that is very well positioned uh, at this time. Um, we have a very, very large nickel deposit that's located in British Columbia. So Northern BC in Canada, which is very attractive for mining. Uh, I'll just go back there. Um, so RPA is uh, modeling a 37,000 tons per year uh, nickel operation for a 37 year mine life. So again, a very large uh, nickel and cobalt operation. And we have 100% ownership of the Turnigan deposit. Um, right now we are looking for strategic partners to come in and invest at the project level. And in January, we released a PEA and now we are actually up at the camp um, drilling and looking to get uh, more data to take us to a pre-feasibility study in 2022. So as I mentioned, we're located in Northern British Columbia, very attractive mining jurisdiction, uh, lots of projects in the area. Uh, we have a lot of um, you know, uh, strong permitting practices in British Columbia. We're a very strong uh, mining province, which is good news for us. Challenging, of course, it does take some years to uh, get, um, you know, get these projects off the, uh, off the ground, but it is possible. So uh, we also have access to a deep water port and we have very good relationships with uh, the First Nations communities. Sorry, it's... Um, skipping to the next slide. So highlights from our PEA, um, we have a very large resource. So 5 billion pounds of nickel in measured and indicated and also 5 billion in uh, pounds in uh, inferred, the inferred category, which is great. We can also, we've modeled a very high grade concentrate um, and a big highlight of this project is the simple flow sheet. So we crush it, grind it, float it and uh, this is old technology so it's very simple and proven and um, you know no new tech that's going to cause us any problems we've also modeled a very low carbon operation so we're actually funding research out of U the university of british columbia right now sorry my slides are skipping ahead and i want them to stop skipping ahead <laughs> um and we are funding research out of UBC, and this is giving us um, data to, to show that we could actually be a carbon neutral nickel mine, which I'll get into a bit later. In terms of a timeline, we released our PEA earlier this year. As I mentioned, we're up at the property gathering more data to take us to a PFS in 2022. And we are targeting for a startup in 2028 with a mine life of 37 years. So we've modeled a very high grade concentrate, which is fantastic. And we're also modeling a, con a concentrate that will be suitable for electric vehicle batteries. So, um, you know, we've decided to go all in with, um, with EV batteries and, um, you know, we're not producing any other types of nickel. Um, so we've done multiple test work campaigns that show this is a clean 18% concentrate, but we're also suitable for other, um, other types of concentrate. And recently we've been looking into uh, producing mixed hydroxide precipitate, which is um, a very popular, uh, a very popular um, output that um, you know, we've done several test work campaigns that show that we could produce a very 
a very uh, amenable uh, MHP. So we're all doing economic studies at the moment to, to determine if this is the route we want to go. But our uh, president, Martin Vidra, who has a lot of experience selling nickel to strategics, has, uh, has told us that this is the way to go. MHP is flying off the shelves. And so this is what we're currently investigating right now. Um, we have a very uh, state-of-the-art tailings management um, plan in the works. Uh, of course, in British Columbia, um, we take this, you know, tailings management very seriously. So we have a state-of-the-art con uh, centerline uh, construction method. This will be built in a, in a very um, narrow valley, which will allow for an efficient construction. We'll be using a dry beach. We'll actually be spreading the tailings and the, the fine particles out over, sorry about my slides. We'll be um, spreading these out over dry beaches. And as we do this, that will actually, the, the silicate tailings will actually go through a natural process of mineral carbonation. And this is tied to the research we're doing at UBC where these particles just by being um, ground up and spread across, um, spread out will actually suck CO2 from the air. So this is super fascinating and it's ongoing research uh, for us right now, but it's, um, you know, it's very possible that with the CO2 sequestration um, in our tailings, we can actually sequester more carbon than we admit. Um, in northern British Columbia, we're in a very, you know, low seismic risk area and with relatively low precipitation, this means it will be a very uh, safe um, facility. Now, looking at nickel prices over the last 40 years, we just, um, you know, modeled this chart to show nickel prices over the last 20 years um, uh, adjusted to $2020. And nickel prices have been at um, hovering around $11 a pound. And we think this is quite interesting because in the last few years, they've been you know, below $10, below $8 a pound. So we really believe that the time for, for nickel prices to go up is, is coming or is, is nearly here. So why is that? Well, the growth of lithium ion batteries and um, the demand for electric vehicles, obviously uh, most people have heard the news and are very aware that um, electric vehicles are just booming. And if you want your electric vehicle to hold a charge, you need a lithium ion battery with high nickel content. So with this explosion of um, demand for EVs, we have, you know, modeled that um, we are going to require 2.5 million tons per year of battery grade nickel. And this is what Turnigan aims to produce, battery grade nickel. So by 2040, we estimate that 40 to 70 new large nickel mines are going to be needed. So that's the scale of Turnigan. So with the production of 37,000 tons per year of nickel. So this is a lot of nickel and this is a lot of new mines. And we really believe that um, building a mine, uh, you know, like Turnigan, which is in British Columbia with proper permitting and strong ESG credentials is absolutely um, critical if we're going to be supplying materials for electric vehicles because end consumers, the consumers who are driving these electric vehicles want to know that their, their batteries and the materials for their car come from a good place. So looking at our price sensitivity analysis in our PEA, we've modeled our depreciated net present value at 750 a pound nickel and when we've got 750 a pound nickel we have a negative net present value so we've got negative 443 million um, NPV so that's kind of the the whole story of our of our asset of our project that our economics are poor at current prices but as nickel prices go up, which we believe that they will because of the electric vehicle revolution, as nickel prices go up, so does the value of our project. So if you look at the, the chart on here, as we have $10 nickel, we, we get to um, half a billion NPV. 
And then as nickel prices go up, the asset just balloons in value. So uh, my CEO, Mark Jarvis, this is exactly why he got involved in the project, the, the leverage that, that you can get with this kind of investment. So um, if you have more questions about that, um, Mark would be definitely happy to discuss so here we have a comparison with HPAL projects. So HPAL projects are our biggest competitor. And these are the kinds of projects that are getting built right now. So we've done a cumulative cash flow comparison with four uh, Greenfields HPAL projects. And you can see that the economics for HPAL projects are, are not better than ours, but they're still getting built. And we believe that this is because Chinese corporations are simply looking to secure a long-term supply of nickel. And Western countries, uh, Europe, North America, were a little further behind in terms of securing supply for electric vehicle, uh, the materials needed to, to build lithium ion batteries and other uh, materials for electric vehicles. So we've got a pretty, yeah, our pre-tax IRR is only 6.3%. Um, so this is why we're having, a, you know, it's the asset is the economics are marginal at current nickel prices, but and as soon as they go up, then then the asset balloons in value. However, so yeah, HPAL projects are still getting built, and we think this is because um, you know the Chinese are looking to secure secure this long term supply. And now if we go deeper into a comparison with the HPAL projects um, and the ones that exist, you know, turn again, our project will be a large open pit mine. So this will be in hard rock. It's a deep deposit. So we're going to minimize deforestation and um, we've got low erosion potential in the area where we're planning to build this mine. There's very low biodiversity. So we'll have very low impact when we're when we're up there and building this mine. But if we compare this to laterite projects, which are found in the subtropics, these are very um, you know, soft soil deposits and they stretch out over a long area. So really you're doing having to do a lot of um, strip mining of beautiful rainforests to get at these at these laterite deposits. And you know. You, there's a lot of deforestation that goes on, high erosion, high potential for um, contamination in the rivers and oceans. They're typically found in areas with high seismic activity and they're located in the tropics. So we have some of the highest biodiversity on the planet in this area. So in terms of, you know, choosing where to build your nickel project to supply uh, minerals or supply the batteries for electric vehicles, it really doesn't make much sense to be destroying uh, big parts of the rainforest to, to get those metals. So again, this is just another reason we believe our, our project is well positioned in Canada. Now, looking at the carbon neutrality at Turnigan, we believe we have a real shot of uh, building a carbon neutral nickel mine. In our PEA, we've modeled um, 2.24 tons of CO2 uh, per ton of nickel. So this is our base case. And this is with a uh, diesel fleet. So this is what we've done because this is what exists today. But we've also modeled this uh, with an electric fleet. So we don't have uh, electric mining fleets just yet, but we believe that that's where um, when we're building the mine and when the mine is in operation that we will have an electric mine fleet to use. So when that's the case, we'll have 0.69 tons of CO2 per ton of nickel. And as I mentioned before, we're funding research out of UBC that will support um, uh, carbon mineralization of our tailings. So as those silicate tailings extract the CO2 from the atmosphere, this actually locks the CO2 away for geological time scales which is fantastic because we're not sequestering it in trees that could burn up and we're not shooting it underground. We're actually just yeah, locking away in a, through a natural process. And we're, we're doing lots of um, research and test work right now with Dr. Greg Dipple um, to see how we can you know, set up credentials and, and continue to validate this and potentially even um, use carbon credits. So, uh, this is really exciting research and could really, you know, position Giga far, far ahead of other projects who are 
having a very high carbon intensity. And as you see here, um, this is against compared to other probable nickel projects, and we're at the low end of the scale in terms of our uh, CO2 intensity. So why invest in gigametals? Well, we're going to need a lot of nickel in the next uh, 20 to 30 years, even beyond that. So if we need this many new nickel mines, then that's a lot of mines and we need to be setting up these projects in, in places that are gonna be taking permitting seriously, that are taking ESG seriously and um, in consulting with local communities and doing their best to you know, produce low carbon minerals. And that's exactly what we're trying to do at Giga Metals is um, have a, a, a large supply of ethically sourced um, battery grade nickel. So again, we have a large deposit and um, we're going to be producing a high grade concentrate that is suitable for electric vehicle batteries. We've got a very strong board, Mark Jarvis, who couldn't be here today, unfortunately. He's our CEO and one of our directors. He's been with the project since 2004. So the two of us are working very closely, closely on advancing this project. And um, yeah, again, he has a lot of experience with this type of project with marginal economics at current prices. So um, if anyone has any further questions for Mark, he's always happy to, to answer those. And Martin Vidra and Bob Mar Morris are also very worth noting because they are, um, you know, they both had careers at, Martin Vidra was at Sherritt for over 30 years and Robert Morris was at Valet and they were both working on uh, selling uh, selling to strategic. So they have a lot of uh, experience there and they know, they know who to talk to and, um, and, and what the strategics are looking for. So this is a huge asset for us. And here's a look at our share structure. Oop, that went a bit too fast. So a market cap of around 30 million Canadian. And yeah, I think that's everything from me today. And if we want to go through questions, I'd be happy to answer. No problem, Holly. So uh, the first question coming from Terry here. Uh, so is that uh, any process in discussing with potential partner of this project? Yeah, we, we're talking to a lot of different people right now. We're having a lot of conversations and it's quite interesting since we released our news on producing MHP, we've had a lot of interest from all different types of people. Obviously, I can't say any names at this point, but um, from battery makers, from large automobile uh, companies, and some of these questions, uh, some of these conversations have just popped up in the last month, and some of these conversations have been ongoing for the last two years. So, we're having a lot of conversations right now. Sure. The next one. You probably talk a bit about the game, maybe details. How does uh, Touring Game stack up against other projects in terms of the grade size and now the, the comparison? Yeah, so we are one of the, I would say we're one of the largest um, out there. And in terms of the projects in Canada, we're actually one of the only um, uh, projects that's modeling battery grade concentrate. So um, we are a low grade deposit, but we model a very high grade concentrate. So um, yeah. Sure. The last question here from James is that in regards to the EVs, uh, there has been some discussions about potential substitute metals for nickel. Uh, any thoughts on that one, the trend? Yeah, of course. Well, I mean, there's a lot of news um, with LFP batteries, and we believe that, you know, that's, that's fine. There's going to be new chemistries coming up, you know, different types of batteries that will be, be used all the time. And that's not exactly a threat to us because there's, there's such a need for nickel. And if you need uh, your vehicle to hold the charge, and if you want to reduce um, range anxiety for consumers, you know, you need more nickel content in your battery if you want it to hold a charge and for the EV to go further. So I think there'll always be a place for different types of um, battery chemistries, but we don't see nickel going anywhere anytime soon. Great, Holly. I think uh, that's it for all the questions uh, today for you and Giga Metals. 
Thank you so much. Thank you.